Well, hello everyone. <laughs> Oh, okay. I am going to do the highly requested study Q and A today while sitting on this table. Um, table. Sitting on this chair, very unladylike. There's a lot of content, so I'll be putting timestamps so that you guys can find content that you guys want. You know. Okay. First topic of the day will be goal setting okay so teachers in school always like ask you to set your goals and shit right i didn't do that uh yeah i was a huge mess yeah i always took goal setting as a joke <laughs> okay first question is what kind of goals i set to get myself to continue studying as in get myself motivated and stuff well as i said previously i take goal setting as a joke especially when it's done in a formal setting like if you force me to set goals like what's what's the purpose right like you have to set your own goals like willingly and not because your teacher asks you to do so but i don't really set like specific goals for myself and i don't set too high of a goal for myself because i know i'll disappoint myself eventually and feel like shit. yeah i set like really broad goals so I have this note from the start of the year. Our this uh, no, our year master asked us to write this at the start of 2020. Yeah, this is the note that I wrote to myself. So first one is to stay happy. Uh, second one is get A's for everything, which I'm really glad I achieved. L1 R5 equals 6. It, this was a joke. I didn't expect myself to get 6, obviously. I never expected myself to get sick, so... And do your best for everything, not neglecting one subject. I set goals for me to improve, and any little bit of improvement would make me quite happy, actually. Yeah, it kind of depends how you want to set goals. If you are a person who gets motivated by ambitious goals, set those ambitious goals, you know what I mean? Um, but if you're like me and like self-confidence is a bit... Uh, you can set broad goals like me <laughs> Anyway, this is a very important message from my year master that I think I should read out uh, Good to have targets and work towards it Do have time to rest too Make sure you set goals but don't overwork yourself guys Second question Mindset in order not to compare yourself with others Firstly, I would like to point out the very rampant comparison in Singaporean and probably Asian schools in general And it's totally not commendable that they are doing this type of comparison, especially rankings and stuff Compare yourself to yourself Example, I would compare my, like probably my prelims results to the results I got on my first term test and see whether there's an improvement, if there's an improvement or there's a general improvement in my study techniques, my the feeling of preparedness, preparedness? If there's an improvement in the feeling of preparedness, I would consider that like an achievement for myself and don't really compare myself to others based on that, you know what I mean? And as I said in the previous point, setting goals for personal improvement is what matters the most. On this note, I know I shared my results in the like last few videos. Don't compare your own results to mine. Uh, there's no use to do so. Personally, I feel that um, rankings get me motivated, but it can be stressful at times also. So be motivated to work, but don't get pressured by those rankings because it doesn't say much about you as a person. It only compares your results that you see on the surface, you know what I mean? Third question, managing expectations. Well, for those of y'all who are in an Asian society, expectations are like, whoa! Even if they are not like directly said to you, you know there are some expectations for yourself. Like you know people have expectations for you although they don't say out loud. Firstly, my parents and teachers did not put any pressure on me because my parents honestly don't really prioritize grades that much. They just tell me to like do my best and I'm really thankful they don't put that much pressure on me uh, for academics and like non-academic areas. However, I had expectations for myself and the expectations I have for myself is like based on my own standards lah, as well as like what I think people expect of me especially me having like a study YouTube channel as well as me being the only child in the family I have a feeling that I have expectations like people have expectations for me with you guys uh, and the fact that uh, you know relatives, teachers and uh, my friends are watching post study content and then you never do well it's like kind of suicide I don't know, I just have this 
self-pressuring thing. I don't know how it works. I just pressure myself a lot to do well. For you guys, for my family and like... Just, I would just tell myself that I had done everything I could for this exam and whatever happens, happens cause the papers are already set. Especially for O-levels. Your papers, you taking O-level this year, yeah, your papers are already set. So, no, no regrets, you know? Don't regret things, yeah. Lastly, did, um, putting too much pressure on myself on another note. I don't show this on video, obviously not, because people around me don't know this either, I think. <laughs> but at one point, I'll cry myself to sleep quite often because, you know, especially the period before prelims, I was like feeling very pressured because it was like the first examination of the year, right? And whoa! It was terrible. Uh, I would like just lie down and just cry and then fall asleep. <laughs> like at night, it was uh, kind of bad. <laughs> but yeah, I think crying helps for me anyway. If you're feeling very uh, pressured by yourself, don't be. Talk to your friends or something. Yeah, it definitely helps. Next is time management. Ah, uh, I. Um, after like three months of holiday, I kind of, I kind of forgot how to manage my time already. So these tips are given based on like, you know, my feeling and what I remember I did during the exam periods or something. Okay, first question. How many hours do you study a day on school days and weekends? Well, as I said previously, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't track the time I study a day because I think tracking a time can end up making me wanting to fulfill a certain time instead of just studying when you want to, you know? Like whenever I track my study time, I would try to study, oh, let me just study for another 30 minutes and start the timer so that I can hit that like 7 hours. It's very stupid to me now. I just study when I want to but, you know, you need the self-discipline to do so. Like, like if you don't want to schedule your time, you don't want to track your time, then you have to have the self-discipline to know when to study. But on school days, uh, normally I would study for like 3 to 5 hours on non-CCA days. On CCA days, I would just try to finish assignments because I can't study after CCA because I'm too tired, right? <laughs> and on weekends, probably like 6 to 9 hours of studying depending on my mood. And depending on the season, like if it's after my exams, I would like not study that much because I want to relax. <laughs> Okay, next question is how many subjects to study in a day and like should I focus on a subject a day or multiple subjects a day? Firstly, it is advisable to study only one subject a day because your brain won't be like switching back and forth between example the judiciary system and a plant's reproductive system, you know what I mean? A bit confusing for your brain to remember all the concepts especially for content heavy subjects, yeah. And yeah, uh, focusing on one subject a day or to do multiple subjects, my chemistry teacher gave a tip that I actually used a month before my O-levels. Basically, follow your O-levels schedule to study. For example, I had chemistry and geography on the same day, so I would always study chemistry and geography on the same day to get my brain, you know, conditioned to doing those two subjects together. I think Personally, I am okay with studying multiple subjects a day and I think it works for me. So it really depends on how you, your brain, uh, pre what your brain prefers. Okay, third question. How late do you study on school days? At the start of the year, before I step down from all my leadership roles, uh, I would take a nap after school and study until 2am. It is inevitable that uh, when you have all these leadership roles and CCA commitments that you like, can't finish everything and I couldn't so yeah I used to sleep at like 2-3 a.m. Those of you are taking O-levels this year don't worry after you step down from a CCA you have like sufficient time to study so don't worry. Uh, after the like during the circuit breaker period I would stop studying by 11 and 10 and like sleep by 11 plus so yeah I fixed my sleep schedule during the circuit breaker period. <laughs> Question number four. Don't you feel tired after CCA then have to do your homework? Of course, that's why I was so caffeine dependent at the start of the year. I would drink coffee at like 7pm or something so that I can continue studying. And I would nap for 3 hours before I wake up at 10pm to study until 2am. Terrible. 
So if you watch my vlogs from early 2020 and 2019, you know I did that. It's terrible, don't do that. Fifth question is how to study after a long day of school. So as I said previously, I depended a lot on caffeine, but that is not good because you get very caffeine dependent. Even now I'm caffeine dependent. I think every day I must drink coffee, otherwise I feel like I'm going into a coma. So you can consider taking a nap, but don't sleep for three hours because that will seriously mess up your sleep schedule. <laughs> After the circuit breaker when I started school, I would come home and exercise to get the adrenaline boost so that uh, I can continue studying. Sixth, <laughs> sixth question is um, how to spend time wisely during revision. So yeah, I, I kind of struggle with this as well because I'm mostly unable to like finish what I planned most of the time when revising. One tip is to plan out the specific sub-chapters that you want to cover during your revision. So you can tackle them like little by little. You don't like tackle the entire chapter at once. You're gonna die. <laughs> when I plan to study like a chapter or something during like when I was chonging for O levels, especially for geography, I always cannot finish like one entire chapter. I would just oh let's postpone it to tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah. Last question of this section is balance. And yeah, balance is so important. I didn't realize this until like in secondary three. I had like Eka Award interview and I was talking about balance and how I regretted not balancing my social and like fun side of life during my lower secondary. So I would I would I I studied a lot during lower secondary because I had like no social life <laughs> and like I didn't I wasn't really involved in like CCA and stuff. So in secondary three when I was given like some leadership roles and like opportunities, I def I like jumped straight into them and actually managed to balance like socializing with my friends, hanging out with them, uh, as well as like the many leadership commitments I have. One thing for sure, I sacrificed sleep, especially in secondary three, because I had I had three leadership roles. All three of them aren't that major, so I could cope with three, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, I slept really little, as I said previously. <laughs> and I used to sleep really late so that I can edit videos, finish homework and revise. Especially because I spent a lot of time with my friends outside uh, for dinner and then we would hang out after that. So I will return home at like 10pm. Yeah, it was terrible. But after June 2020, I managed to get my shit together and because of COVID, we didn't really hang out that much. And one thing's for sure, I see hanging out with friends, watching anime, watching K-pop videos, uh, editing videos for you guys as like a little treat after studying. So I would like finish my assignments properly and quickly so that I would have time to hang out with my friends and stuff. So that's how I motivate myself to balance my life, I guess. Next section is productivity tips. Disclaimer, you must find what works for you lah. So these are some general tips, but you have to try, try some stuff out yourself, experiment around, you know, and find what works best for you. First question, best time to study. So as I said previously, you have to find out if you're like a morning person or a night owl. I used to be able to study at very well at midnight. So I did that more in like secondary 3, 2019 and, the, and early 2020 when I had a more packed schedule. However, I eventually realized that when I'm not that busy, I can actually study optimally from like 8am to 10pm and I can't function after lunch. So, you know, those times you can't function properly, perhaps after lunch when you're having a food coma, you can take that time to watch anime and relax. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> and once you know when you can concentrate the best, use that time wisely and study during that time so you can get the most things done and have time to relax as well. Second question, staying productive without touching your phone. Because I make videos really frequently for you guys and I use my phone to record so I don't touch my phone at all. <laughs> I also like to, like when I'm not recording, I would shove my phone like in like a pile of worksheets or books so that I can't find my phone easily. Then I'll just give on finding my phone and do my work instead. So last point is that I always have my do not disturb turned on. Even now my do not disturb is turned on because I don't like notifications coming in all the time. It's just really annoying. I always turn it on so if I don't reply you know why. <laughs> that is really helpful if you don't want to get distracted by notifications. You can also turn on your airplane mode. Third one is how to stay focused. 
Personally, I use music to help me concentrate because I won't stone somewhere else <laughs> when I listen to music when I study. But a lot of you guys actually said, oh, how you like listen to music and study at the same time? I don't know. I just can do it, so I do it. <laughs> I feel like listening to music makes studying less boring so I can stay focused. But yeah, apparently according to some study, uh, listening to music isn't the best when studying. So yeah, you try it out for yourself, man. <laughs> More generally, uh, using Tide or Forest, the apps, may also help you all to concentrate and not use your phone. And because I have an attention span of a goldfish, I can like only concentrate maximum for like 45 minutes when studying, especially during exam period, I get bored very easily. So I would take breaks after that short period of studying so that I can concentrate better during the study session itself. Fourth point, which is kind of like a sub question from the previous one, how to avoid procrastination. Avoiding procrastination ultimately boils down to accountability. When you know you have a deadline, you're most likely cons complete the assignment and if you know the assignment is graded, you will probably go do it, you know what I mean? Same for studying, uh, make sure you know when your tests are and when your assignments are due so that you can work towards the goal like slowly and not rush at the last minute. But keep in mind, everyone procrastinates, I procrastinate, oh, of course. <laughs> I have this report that I have to do that I've been working on for the past like two months and yeah I started writing the report seven days before it was due <laughs> so yeah um procrastination fifth question is how to study for long hours and in relation to my study time lapses I know in my study time lapse I seem like I'm studying for long hours but I take breaks like a lot of the time like when I stop recording I will use my phone I think that that balance is what helped me through the entire ex exam period. I don't like study for like three hours on end. I don't have the attention span anyway to do so. I would take breaks after a while. Yeah, and studying for long hours, you don't need to like, you don't need to study everything in one sitting, you know what I mean? Break your study sessions into smaller sections if that works for you. Last question is, writing a to-do list but cannot complete. It's perfectly normal, I do that 100% of the time. I always write out to-do lists and then realize, wow, I only can complete like three tasks out of like the seven I've written, ha ha ha. One tip is to break your tasks into smaller subtasks. As I said, example, tackling one geography chapter, break it, write down the individual sub-chapters and instead of the huge big ass chapter so that you feel it's more manageable. And being able to cross out more tasks out of your to-do list because they are smaller sub-tasks, you feel more motivated naturally because you feel like you've completed more. It's just a psychological thing, I guess. <laughs> Next is individual subject tips. Oh my god! <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna group the languages together, math and science together, humanities together, so it's easier to explain. Firstly, I'm gonna talk about languages, so English and for my mother tongue, it's Chinese. I don't know how to give tips for other mother tongues, so if you guys have tips for other mother tongue, drop it down below so that everyone can learn. So firstly, I am absolutely trash at languages, so I don't know how much these tips will help you guys, but they helped me personally, so I'm gonna share them. One thing that helped me for both my languages is reading a lot of model compositions as well as building up on a lot of vocab. When you read model compositions, you learn how to tackle the questions, how others tackle the questions, and you can learn from them. On the point of building vocab, I think it helps for both paper one and paper two as well as your oral examination listening comprehension in general. Yeah, so it helps in your entire language if you build up on vocabulary. Especially in Chinese, I bought this like assessment book, I don't have it now. I used to have this assessment book and uh, they taught a lot of uh, technical terms for argumentative essay. So I memorized almost all the technical terms and it helped me understand the passages in paper 2 better, as well as when tackling like uh, 电邮 or 论说文, 论说, 论说文. Uh, I can like put in those technical terms and explain my stance really clearly. Same for English. Also, one thing I found out is to find out which composition you are better at. So, you know, we have narrative and uh, argumentative for both Chinese uh, mother tongue languages and English, right? So you find out which one you're better at, which one you're more likely to excel in. So for me, I found that argumentative essay is where I can score. So I really practiced a lot of argumentative essay nearing the exam for English and Chinese. And I also asked my teachers a lot for consultation so that I can like bring my composition to them and have them like rate it and tell me where to improve on. 
Oh, on this note, uh, you must also study the one you are weaker at. So, for example, I was studying like exclusively argumentative essay, but the day before the exam, I actually looked at some narrative essays just in case the argumentative uh, topic isn't that nice to write about. Second point is on math and sciences, especially the triple science and A math. Yeah, it's tough, man. Sciences are so tough. I think that science and math all boils down to practicing and if you watch my vlogs everything, I actually practiced a lot but I don't think I practiced enough. Like, I still think I was unprepared. So firstly, when you're doing your homework, treat it like a test or like do it seriously lah. Don't like copy from your friends so that you can practice while doing your homework. And if you're unsure about anything, ask your friends, teachers or tuition teachers if you uh, have tuition teachers um so your doubts won't snowball like for physics my doubts snowballed until i almost died before my prelims so yeah get your doubts cleared as soon as possible another tip is to take note of model answers and learn how to link keywords together to tackle a question that's what i did for like my sciences where i'll just like memorize or maybe like read through a lot of model answers and compare their answer to mine and see where I can improve on. Specifically for chemistry, if your basics are weak, tackle your basic topics first by doing your topical TYS, a uh, 10-year series, and reviewing old worksheets. I did this nearing prelims because I realized I forgot most of the basic concepts and it's pretty much for prelims. <laughs> so I reviewed my topical TYS and like reviewed all my worksheets like from Sec3. For biology, personally, I, I try to understand the biology concepts instead of memorizing them because I'm lazy. I memorize keywords and the flow of events and just link everything up together during the exam. This is so hard to explain. Next, physics. Once again, take note of all the um, keywords and for physics especially, practice more because it's more like related to math, you know what I mean. Lastly, for mathematics, huh, just practice a lot. <laughs> I literally chunked like six papers, like six paper one and paper twos before my examinations for both E and A math. So I guess that's how I scored because I did enough practice. <laughs> uh, next is like tips for memorizing. Honestly, I hate doing memorization. It's very tedious and I always feel very tired when I do it. <laughs> because of my laziness, I try to understand the concept instead of like, like, 死死背, memorizing for the sake of memorizing all the content. Understanding the concepts, I don't need to memorize as much. And find out which method of memorizing works best for you. Auditory, visual, or oral method. I would, like, I would read to myself or write things down if you watch my vlogs to memorize so yeah next is social study tips firstly can you say do you hate social studies don't worry me too <laughs> i think the skills used in ss is very similar to history and i sucked at history i hated history so ss was hell for me liked learning about the content but I hated studying for it, you know what I mean? Firstly, uh, for source-based questions, SBQ, practice a lot through practicing, doing practice papers or your 10-year series and read a lot of model answers. I think that's how I learn the best, is reading a lot of model answers and learning how to tackle each type of question. So what, what surprise, hybrid, whatever crap there is. Just read model answers for that type of questions and learn from that. What is SRQ? Structured response questions? I'm not sure, I can't remember, man. Just memorize the whole textbook, that's what I did. I tried to memorize as much as possible from the entire textbook. It was so tedious and I felt like dying the entire time. Memorize 10 chapters for that 8 marks cause that 8 marks might save your ass. I think it saved mine because my SBQ definitely died last year. And if you don't want to memorize the whole textbook, at least read through it before the exam like what 3 times so you have an impression. Those of y'all asking for help for history and literature, sorry, I, I, I'm always like a borderline pass in lower secondary for history and literature so I can't give any tips on that. <laughs> for geography, I actually love geography so I find learning and memorizing everything very fun. First, I get a main idea on what I need to memorize for that chapter. So for example, like for plate tectonics, you need to memorize response measures as well as the impacts on like society and shit. When I know there is some like response measures and impacts to memorize, I will tackle them first because when I memorize measures and impacts, there will be case studies, right? I memorize actually a lot of case studies so I like have 
enough content to use if it comes out during an exam. Okay, I may or may not upload like a case study compilation that I made for geog elect geography. So if I am going to upload it, I'm going to put it in the comments. So check the comments for any you know, Google Drive shit. So when I memorize case studies, content kind of flows naturally. So when you memorize case study uh, and you know how many people die, you know one of the impacts is death or like injuries. And yeah, that's how I memorize for geography. And because they are like real life examples, right? It makes it more interesting and I can memorize content easily. It might not work for you because I have friends that can't memorize case studies and just memorize the content and memorize one or two case studies only. But personally, I memorize a lot of case studies and just read the content. <laughs> also, after doing some practice papers, you'll realize that there's no need to memorize everything. So focus on those uh, content that is more important. For example, my geography teacher told us once that don't need to memorize definitions, although like it's very highly emphasized when in like lower sec or something. But yeah, there's no need to memorize definitions in upper secondary, especially for O level. Lastly is practical examinations. Wow, practical examinations were hell for me because I'm not good at practical, but I try to calm myself down before every practical and I just stop studying when in a waiting room because the more I study, the more nervous I get. So I just don't study in the waiting room. There is no need to panic before the exam. Just don't panic. And memorize all you can. Like those things you can memorize, just memorize them just in case they come out. Example is the precaution measures, sources of error, etc. Uh, these are like typical questions and you can memorize some model answers for them. So just memorize them in case they come out. So specifically for biology, Go online and look at cross-section of cut fruits and um, prawns. Uh, so analyze these pictures so you know what to draw for biological drawings. Yeah, and it'll get you mentally prepared for whatever that will come out. Biological drawings is one thing that you can score in, like definitely score in. So just put in a bit more effort on that. For chemistry and physics probably, uh, practice a lot of chemical calculations. So it is natural for you to do it during the exam and you don't need to like second guess yourself. Next is a section about assessment books and tuition. First question is recommendations for chem, English and physics like for assessment books. I think that the 10 year series is definitely sufficient but if you want extra practice like me, here are some recommendations I guess. Uh, for the three sciences, the 1001 MCQ questions assessment books are quite awesome for prelims and O-levels when you have to do the MCQ papers. I think that MCQ is a section that can really pull your grades up so you have one week before your MCQ papers so you might as well go like like chong for it right and I didn't have any more assessment books for sciences I just did the yearly and topical QIS as well as other schools practice paper which were given by my school for mathematics I did a lot of practice papers and TYS as well as use some assessment books like random assessment books you can find from popular bookstore yeah I can't I can't remember what I did because honestly I hated doing them for English all I read were model compositions printed by my teachers I think I did like one or two pages of like a vocabulary assessment book so I can't really say that helped me because I literally did like three pages so yeah I also read essays from the broader perspective I think they have O level essays A level essays they really helped me to learn how to tackle argumentative essay professionally yeah second question is revision books for social studies all I did was the TYS and other schools practice papers I didn't have assessment books but I think I saw my friends in school while revising having like summary books reference books from like popular or something uh, for like the SS textbook so if you want like concise notes you can go to popular and find them I guess if you have anything like any recommendations for assessment books whatever drop them in the comment section so everyone can be helped last question for this section. Do you think tuition is necessary for good grades? And just the general concern about people around me having tuition and I don't. So I feel anxious and about how tuition is a privilege. Tuition is definitely not necessary for good grades but it like helped me tremendously for AMF. 
F9 to A1, you know what I mean? Like, it really helped. If you're considering tuition, you should think about the amount of supplementary teaching you need. Is, like, your school teacher consultation enough? And is your school teacher talking in class enough for you? So, for me, is my teacher didn't really do a good job at teaching AMF in secondary 3, so I struggled a lot until I got tuition and helped myself clear my own doubts. And yeah, don't worry about people around yourself having tuition because having tuition doesn't guarantee your success. I know like many of my classmates who don't have tuition and still excel during O-levels. You have to put in effort either way to achieve good results. To be honest, you can't just depend on tuition to get good results. It is a very short-term goal and it's... Don't just don't do that lah. <laughs> if you need help, ask your friends and teachers and they will be more than willing to help you. On the point of tuition being a privilege, yeah. Having tuition is absolutely a privilege and I'm really thankful I'm able to have tuition. Yeah, don't take tuition for granted and don't see tuition as a place, another place to get homework. Think of it as another place for you to get more practice for a certain subject you are not good at yet. Next section, revision and studying. First is about O levels. So I'm gonna bring you through. So firstly, I wanna say feeling unprepared is just a part of life. Don't worry. You always feel unprepared. Like me right now when I'm starting lessons tomorrow. I felt unprepared until I got my results. So don't worry. So first question is about the revision for O levels throughout the year. Throughout the year, I consistently revised, especially after all the content was covered. Um, so it's like after me and geared up a lot for my mid-year mother tongue paper and prelims. So I actually studied a lot before prelims and my old mother tongue old levels, yes. After prelims, I felt really unmotivated and didn't really revise that intensely because, you know, burnout. <laughs> um, and I didn't revise that intensely until two-ish weeks before my first written paper. Second sub question, when did I start revising for set 3 topics? I started revising for set 3 topics after March holidays, but um, y'all should start now. Y'all should have started actually like last December if you were unsure of any set 3 topics, but it's, it's not really late to start now also, so start now. Third question, when did I start studying for O-levels? Uh, I really started studying for O-levels in May because it was the circuit breakup period and I had nothing better to do, so I decided to start studying. <laughs> but one thing to note is because of the COVID situation last year, I didn't have mid-year exams, so I did not need to study for that. So if you guys uh, you guys should have, oh my god, there's a bug, I was like, no, 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 no. So if you guys have mid-year examinations this year, please start studying now <laughs> like consistently don't need too intense right now the last question for this sub point <laughs> do you study independently or only when exams are approaching i study content that is taught in school by doing my own summary notes if you guys watch my videos and stuff uh but i will obviously study more when exams are approaching or tests are approaching because I need to get that grade. <laughs> I study independently as well as gear up towards the examination. Second sub point is revising for weak subjects. Personally, I did really bad for Chinese and English and was very unsure of myself for these subjects as well as actually EMF, chemistry and social studies. So, so I kept practicing these subjects and prioritizing them over other subjects I'm more consistent in. For example, biology. I didn't really study bio until the day before. That was bad choice but I'm gonna say this over and over again if you need help for these weaker subjects uh, just ask your teachers for consultations third sub point keeping track of all the chapters I've studied and need to be reviewed basically I write down on my journal what I have to cover and check things off as I revise. I find that looking at your syllabus document also helps when nearing the exam so you know what to study specifically. Fourth sub point, what did I do to force myself to study? Forcing yourself to study isn't something you should do unless you have an exam the next day and haven't started studying. Uh, keep in mind, mental health is always more important than a grade. If you need to take a break, take one because it's always worth it to rest first and be more productive after your rest. Uh, but one thing I like to do when I feel a little unmotivated is to watch study videos on YouTube and feel hella inspired to study. I watch other study YouTubers videos as well. Fifth sub point, things that motivate you during study sessions. I play lofi, k-pop or j-pop <laughs> to hype myself up during study sessions. A lot of people say they can't concentrate while listening to music but it personally helps me so I do that. <laughs> I also like to keep my workspace clean. It's not really clean right now so don't look at it because it helps me stay like motivated and have like a very clear mind. 
my sixth sub point best time to study even if there are no tests coming up there isn't really a best time to study just make sure you are practicing a bit here and there so that you are consistent and don't lose touch with studying and the content being taught oh the last sub point do crash courses work it's subjective because i haven't been to a crash course the last time i've been to one was in premier 5 and i must say i didn't learn anything there yeah um i didn't even enjoy the food there it was just a terrible experience just saying also i feel like if i attended a crash course i'll panic more and it won't help me because i like pacing myself instead of like studying a lot nearing the exam depends on your learning style and how much you can absorb within a short period of time and if you're a person who just you can you know you can study the night before and still excel in the exam crash courses probably work for you <laughs> this is a section about note taking and notes in general so there's one question is it better to copy from textbooks or other notes or write down from memory notes is a platform for you to summarize and gather all that you have learned into one place so it is important for you to get the accurate information down on your notes uh, this way when you revise you can have a bird's eye view of everything you have learned and you can refer easily so don't write things down from memory for notes you want to refer to again because it just defeats the entire purpose imagine if you remember something wrongly and write in your notes then you're going to refer again and again to wrong information just does not you know do what works for you and make sure you get the accurate information down next section examination <laughs> what to do the day before your examination one tip sleep earlier yes i sleep at like 10 the night before examinations because otherwise i'll fall asleep during the exam <laughs> also i pray i'm not religious but i pray to whoever whoever is around <laughs> to give me the strength and tackle the next day's paper just to psych myself up but in general just find a way to calm yourself down and psych yourself up for the examination that's what i do to get prepared for the next day next section is a whole last section about burnout first question is have you ever felt like you're tired from school tasks homework and studying of course who doesn't <laughs> i'm going to be honest during my september holidays i felt so burnt out i couldn't film any content for you guys although i plan to yeah because i was just in tears a lot of the time and couldn't do work properly so yes it is normal to feel absolutely fucking done with studying because it's not what everything life is about like studying should not be your life it's like not the most important but it's not like something you can ignore either so this is where anime and youtube and whatever you do as a hobby comes in i took a 1.5 break of just binging anime and not doing work like during my september holidays just to de-stress and yeah i was back in shape to study for the next week's paper after doing that 1.5 day study detox thing however this i'm not saying this will work for everyone i'm just um saying that taking breaks is vital and yeah having burnout burnouts us it's so normal don't worry man <laughs> Second question is how not to burn out. So elaborating from the last point, taking breaks is the key to not burning out. And also, if you do your work consistently and don't study intensely throughout the year, cause no, don't do that. You're gonna get burnt out like very often. And also, don't wait till like the week before exam to start studying very intensely. During that week, you're gonna burn out. You must find that balance between long-term consistency as well as short-term like chonging for the exam. Know what works for you. A lot of things about studying is just knowing yourself and knowing your limits and knowing how you study best because my tips might not necessarily work for everyone, you know what I mean? Studying is like really subjective, just like exercising. Third question, how to get back confidence for a subject you have failed. So yeah, it's perfectly normal to have zero confidence in the subject you have failed at. Even if I don't feel in a subject, I will still feel like I have no confidence. So it's perfectly fine, don't worry. So before prelims, I have mock exam for chemistry. Yeah, and I got like C5 and C6 for all of them. So I felt super unmotivated and did and yeah i cried a lot for chemistry but anyway i saw this as an as like a way to prove myself wrong to like my teachers uh who saw my c6 and c5 and went like hello do you want like a1 or a2 so i said i obviously replied a1 because that's what i expected myself to score la. um but yeah i want to prove myself 
and prove my teachers wrong. So I guess I worked really hard for that. Fourth point, how to be productive when I'm feeling unmotivated or emotionally stable and like in a rut. Well, first things first, I said it before, mental health is like the most important thing. So if you're feeling like emotionally unstable, please talk to someone and like uh, get your feelings settled first before you jump into studying because like being productive and studying will definitely take a toll on your mental health sometimes. So get your mental health uh, in check first before you get productive again because it's kind of a cycle. Like once you once your mental health is great, you'll naturally become like really productive and yeah, you'll feel more motivated naturally. Last point is on managing stress. So haha, stress management is one of one thing that I suck at with confidence. And yeah, I literally get stressed over the smallest thing. I went to my uh JC orientation and I think I am so stressed, I have an eczema outbreak right now. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm stressed. There's literally no reason for me to be stressed, but I'm stressed and I have an eczema outbreak. <laughs> so, yeah. So what I do when I get stressed, I just watch anime or K-pop to distress. Or when commuting, I'll just blast songs and let my mind wander somewhere other than studies or whatever that's stressing me. So I'll just like, and I just stone at the floor of the MRT while I commute. Yeah, it's a great experience. You guys should try it out. <laughs> ah, no, no, no. Next point is JC or Polly is better. This is a, uh, honestly, a question I asked myself in sec 4. It's actually purely subjective. I've gone through the entire debating phase where I had an existential crisis over the next stage of my life, aka right now, like tertiary education in general. In the end, I realized like I didn't really like have a fixed career that I really want to pursue. So I chose JC, I'm in JC right now. <laughs> so all in all, decide based on your style of learning. Like you're, are you more inclined to excel if you're doing hands-on activities or content-based like learning. If you're a more hands-on person, poly will definitely be like the choice that will suit you more, I guess. Second thing to consider is your career choice, whether or not you have decided what you want to do. Personally, I don't know because I must see, you know, like my results, like whether can make it or not. If you have like a lot of doubts about whether you want to go JC or poly right now, there's a like Career guidance counsellor? There should be one in every school, uh, in Singapore especially. You can go talk to the person, the counsellor, and see what they have to say. Next section is about the subject combination for SEC 3 or Year 3. And how do you decide your subject combination? I chose Triple Science with Elective Geography as my combination because Firstly, I can't do literature and history. I was a straight borderline f failing student for exam in lower secondary. And luckily, I love sciences and couldn't choose between bio and physics. General tips for choosing your subject combination is choose based on your strengths and your interest. I have this really good friend of mine. She got like top in the level for history and decided to take geography. And she was in the same class as me, yes. As you can see, sometimes you can excel at something but you are totally not interested in it. So you have to weigh the like pros and cons and see what you want lah. For the interest thing that I was talking about, when you're interested in the subject, you will naturally want to study it so it's easier for you to cope. For example, I love geography. I actually considered taking geography in JC but biology is already a hell of a time so I'm not about to commit suicide right now, so I decided to take econs instead. Last section for this video is just like general questions about secondary school. First question, how to cope in sec 1? Honestly, lower secondary, just have fun. Get used to the learning environment because sec 1 and sec 2 isn't that important for your upper secondary or secondary 2 like 
content. Just make sure your mathematics foundation is strong because mathematics is the only subject in O levels that will test you content from secondary 1 to 4. Second question is top tips for upper secondary. Basically consistency and make sure you manage your time well because in upper secondary you, you are about to take up like a lot of leadership roles and stuff. It'll be kind of tough like from experience lah. And it's all it all boils down to managing your time well. Third and last question is tips for straight A's. Honestly, my results, if you look at the individual score out of 100, it isn't that great. Like, they are mainly like borderline A1s, so as in like 75 or 76 marks out of 100, but it's still considered an A1. So you can consider what you want to aim for, like do you want to make your grade look good or are you excelling for maybe like 80 marks and above? You know what I mean? Like both scores are still A1s. One is significantly more difficult to achieve. But in general, make sure you don't neglect a certain subject even if you hate it. <coughs> Social studies. <coughs> I focus on a subject that I'm not good in while making sure I maintain my strong subjects. So that's how I kind of got all A1s. I still don't know how I got all A1s. Miracles can happen during O-levels because of standardized marking. So just keep in mind that sometimes your school grades might not be reflected in your O-level grades. I, I don't know how I got a A for English. So yeah. Oh, I'll, also I have a last point. Hashtag fix schools not students. Goodbye. <laughs> I hope you like this tips video and I hope that it somehow helps you uh, in your O levels or your upper secondary or like secondary school in general. I'll be going into JC. If you have any tips for JC, please drop them in the comment section down below. I'm actually gonna die right now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye bye.